Okay, time to have a wee look at homework sheet WW3. The first question, a recurrence relation. You've got the hamsters who are losing 20% each year, but then 400 are being added. So, in terms of your recurrence relation, if HN plus 1 is the hamsters next year, then that is going to be 80% of this year's hamsters plus the 400 who get added. If you turn that 80% into a decimal, then you end up with a recurrence relation which says HN plus 1 equals 0 0.8 of HN add 400. From this expression, you can work out what the limit for the hamsters is. Okay, remember your, your limit formula. Get your answer there and then write your conclusion. Second question, some differentiation. First thing we need to do with the y equals a quarter x is the x needs to move up to the top. Now note it's only the x that moves up. So that is going to leave me with one quarter and the x is going to move up as x to the negative one. Now you can do your dy by dx. For the second one, same thing. Got a little bit of a problem with the root x, so we need to rewrite that first of all. So we're going to write that as x to the power of half. Just keep the 4 as a 4. Now you can differentiate it. And then question C. We've got a fraction this time. Best way to deal with the fraction is to split it up into two separate fractions. So split this up as x squared over x plus 3x over x. Why are we doing that? Because we can get some cancelling taking place. That will give you a simpler expression which you can then differentiate. Question 3. We've got a circle and we've got a point. Now if this point is to lie in the circumference that means that we can substitute the x numbers in the x space the y numbers into the y spaces and hopefully it should all end up as 0. So 2 squared plus 0 squared plus 4 times 2 and so on and so on and so on. Hopefully we're going to end up with a situation at 0 equals 0. Question, oh what's happened here? The second part We've got to find the equation of the tangent at that point. So, I've worked out the centre of the circle. It's not too hard to do. You get that from the formula quite easily. Half the x number changes the sign. Half the y number changes the sign. And we're looking for the equation of the blue line here. So how are you going to work out the equation of that blue line? First thing you're going to get is the gradient of the tan... Uh, sorry. Let me fix that. First thing you're going to get is the gradient of the radius. Okay, the orange line, and we know the two points, so we can use the gradient formula. Then we're going to get the gradient. Oops, my pen's not working. This is almost as bad as the blue screen at school. Then we're going to get the gradient of the tangent, which is perpendicular. And then we're going to use y minus b equals mx minus a. Okay, just don't know what that is, just ignore that. Question 4. Here's the expansion we've got to use this time. So that is going to be k sin x cos alpha minus k cos x sin alpha. Now looking over here, the 4 is beside the cos x. Here is the cos x, so this part here must be equal to 4. However, we problem negative sign here, not 1 here. So that means that k sin alpha is going to equal negative 4. Similarly, here's the sin x, and beside it is negative 3. Here's the sin x, and beside it is k cos alpha, 
So k cos alpha is going to equal negative 3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a wee bit different, guys, because we've got two negatives this time. So before we go and work out what k is, before we go and work out what alpha is, we need to do the double tick thing. Sine being negative is this box and this box. Cos being negative is this box and this box. So the answer you're looking for alpha is in here. Okay? Please make sure you find that one and not the one in this box. Okay? This box is 53. That is not what we want as the answer. We want this box. Not a space. Okay, now I need to... Oops. Let's undo that. My mistake. It took a more space to write that than I thought. Let's put that up there. Okay, so let's say that we've managed to work out k as 5 and alpha as 200 and 33. So the second part of the question is you've got to solve 5 sine x minus 233 equals negative 2. Okay, so get the 5 over first of all and then do your all sine tan cos stuff. So your angle will equal something and something. Take the negative 233 over, so you'll get your answer as something and something. You'll probably have to bring it back inside before you get your final answer. Okay, now we... Okay, now let's say we've done all that properly. Oh, wait a minute, what's happened? Next one. Right, so we've got two points A and B. Here they're here. And you've got a point H, which is in between them somehow. Now the easiest way to do it is to set up my diagram and then go, how do you work out H? We do 1 times the B and the 2 times the A. So 1 times the B plus 2 times the A and divide by 3. Why 3? Because 1 and 2 makes 3. So looking at the question, we know that B is equal to the vector 4, 0, negative 8. We know A, looking at the question, is negative 2, 3, 4. So if you plug these numbers into this formula, oh, my pen's going again. A second to catch up. Right, there we go. Put the B into that formula, the into that formula, you can work out where H is. Now remember, it's a coordinate we're looking for, so we need to leave it as a horizontal point. Second part, calculate the size of angle ABC. That's this angle in here, okay, which we'll call theta. We're going to use the formula that cos theta is equal to B to A dotted with B to C divided by the length of BA times the length of BC. Okay, you know how to work out B to A. B to A is little a minus little b. So get that for there. Similarly, get an answer for B to C. Stick them all in the formula. Work out what the angle is. Question 6. If you're still with me. Calculate the equation of the perpendicular through FG. So that's the line here that goes through the midpoint at 90 degrees. So what's the three stages? First stage is find the midpoint of FG. Second stage is find the gradient of FG, which will then give you the perpendicular gradient. And then use these answers, the perpendicular gradient and the midpoint in the formula y minus b to get the equation of the red line. It says find the equation of the median through g. So the median through g is the line which cuts that side in half that goes through g. So a similar procedure to what we've just done. This time we need to find the midpoint of EF. 
Once we've got the midpoint of EF, then we find the gradient of the orange line. How do we do that? Well, we use the midpoint EF and we use the point G. Once you've got that gradient, back to using the Y minus B equals MX minus A. And then part C of the question, simultaneous equations. Now it should all work out to be nice, easy, simple numbers, guys. There's no horrible fractions involved at all. Question 7. Find the corners of the point on the curve with the gradient. So, two magic words in this question. Curve, gradient. What does that tell you? That tells you to find the y by dx. It tells you to differentiate. So, find the y by dx. You know how to do that. What does the question say? It's got to equal 2. So you put that formula equal to 2. Move the 2 over to make it 0. Once you've made it equal to 0, then you factorise what we've got on the left hand side to work out your x numbers. Putting them back into this equation up here will give you the y numbers. And then lastly, number 8, how are we going to go about simplifying this thing here? Well the first thing is to get the 3 up to the top, get the 2 up to the top. So we've got log to the base 4 of 2 to the power 3, e to the power 3, take away log to the base e, 3 to the power 2, e to the power 2. Okay, you can then split this up as an add log, as an add log, things will start to simplify and it'll come out. It's not a particularly easy simplification, but it will simplify a wee bit. There we are, guys. Guess we've got harder towards the end, especially number eight. But good luck.